Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we're here with Dario Nardi and we're gonna discuss the four subtypes of the INTP personality. So the first one we'll be going over is the dominant INTP. Dario actually says for the INTP, these four subtypes are the most distinct from each other. So I'm curious to know what that means. He calls the dominant the ambitious strategist. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's start there. So. To honor our audience and INTPs, rather than listing out a variety of themes and random anecdotes and so on, although we'll still have some anecdotes, uh, is to go back definitionally to what is underlying each subtype and, and really using the name that's there. Um, so the dominant subtype I call the ambitious strategist, and I think we can really use those two words, ambitious and strategist. Uh, with a confidence, and they are a driven and confident subtype. Um, and, and we can also look at just the functions and sort of the analytic or yang version of introverted thinking, which is very much focused on this is the model, this is how you derive things, this is what is correct, uh, trying to sort of formalize everything into the, the, the most accurate representation that they have. And then the the also the sort of yang analytic version of extroverted intuiting, which is like this marketer type. So overall, the dominant subtype comes off as more, yeah, a little bit more extroverted for sure than other INTPs, but generally just more confident, more driven. Um, this person, you might think for a moment, oh, do would, would they come off as an ENTP? I, I think that they could come off as like a sort of obnoxious ENTP, but that, especially for the younger ones, but I, I think that that's sort of missing the, the testosterone flavoring that goes with it. Um, what we see here is that they're very, very comfortable with or interacting with people in leadership roles. Um, and they're very comfortable with with models that like where is the person focusing their mental energy and sort of their research and learning and all of that so it's going to be focused and it's going to be at the systems level and the leadership level and so they're very comfortable with concepts like power and, and may, maybe not immediately when they're 15 or something like that but they're they're this objective hard hitter critical um speaking their mind wanting to be like locate what is the dominant position within the system and then accessing whatever levers or power are, are there in order to either advise or to move things along. Um, and what, what are the principles of, of power and uh, of interaction? I don't want to use just that one word, like they're going to have more interest than that, uh, different backgrounds. But overall, I think that's what it is. Um, like I said, leadership positions, it could easily be uh, any kind of decision making or advising. They are the kind of person that even if, say, they're purely academic, they're going to be somebody who goes out, who gives talks, who is very happy to meet with um, and, and talk back to and correct uh, the president of the university. Uh, surely some thought is going to go into it before they do that, um, because there's that strategist part, uh, as well as the ambitious part. Um, where I think that they differ, in, some other places they differ from INTPs is, is in terms of the brain wiring, there is this more front of the brain stuff rather than say a starburst pattern or back of the brain. So if they have, if they reflect on stuff, it's more in their spare time in their moments. They're not doing a lot of reflecting live when the situation is asking them to make decisions. They're more, this is the way that it's worked out. Um, not that they have a worked out plan, but they're very clear on the principle that they hold. So if their principle is uh, something, may, maybe this is not a high development example, but something like survival of the fittest, they're very quick to apply that principle in the situation. And, and see like, okay, this is what this means in this situation. So I am going to say this, or I'm going to position myself this way. Um, and similarly, because they don't either, they don't have any starburst pattern at all, or it's gonna be something that's way down there. So their creativity is more about things like 
okay, let's do a brainstorming session or let's make some inferences and hypotheses and using a particular part of the brain to do that. Um, this was great in the sense that they remain focused. Um, they can be quite successful in terms of ambition. This is not a slacker INTP by any means. Um, so they might easily get through like a PhD program in political science and be publishing articles and doing talks and that kind of thing. Um, be even entrepreneurs, um, advising at a community level, organizational level. I think that the hardest thing that they have, and this is hard already for INTP and ISTP, is listening. Um, but of all the INTPs, the one that has the most challenge in terms of perspective shifting and in terms of listening. Um, by listening, what I mean is... Uh, when, when there's like a very analytic sort of dominant introverted thinking, they're listening for how what you're saying fits into their pre-worked out model or method of reasoning. They're not listening for what is your paradigm and how can I figure that out? So if I say something like, let's use MBTI as an example, they're going to have already this worked out framework of institutions and research and the concepts of like, what is a trait and what is personality? They have these definitions. If I say something to them about personality that say like, well, you know, personality is actually an attractor in a dynamic system. If they don't know what those terms are, those terms are not part of their framework. They simply don't hear it or it passes through them as if it was never heard. Uh, so it can be very frustrating. Um, moreover, they're going to be listening that when I say something immediately it's interpreted or fit into their reasoning framework as a way to like critically evaluate it. Like, oh, which box of the pre-worked out boxes, uh, does it fit into? This is very, very different from say the harmonizing or even the creative INTP. Um, so this is where, especially when they're younger, argumentative, obnoxious, uh, overly critical, um, overtly skeptical. The normalizing can be skeptical, but not so overtly. Uh, so that's like some of the downside. And I think that's more immature stuff. The benefit is that when they're right and they keep repeating stuff, like they stick to that. So they're not go with the herd people. Like they're the least to go with the herd of any INTP. Uh, unless it so happens that their paradigm really matches the herd and that they have sort of decided this is what I'm going to buy into strategically for my life uh, in terms of climbing the hierarchy or whatnot. Going back to that definition of like ambitious, not just a strategist, but ambitious. So long, long story there. But um, uh, though, those are I, I think that captures the dominant INTP. With this subtype, if they have a grand idea for what kind of endeavor they want to do with their life. They're the one most likely to pursue it. It's like, oh, it's such a great idea to create this website that'll impact all these people with this new idea. They're the type most likely to, if they have a great big idea, a lofty idea, they're out of all INTPs, the dominant is the most likely to pursue it and go for it. And it also seems like you said that the dominant has the hardest time with perspective shifting. And I wonder if it's the opposite for the harmonizing INTP. Like, Harmonizing subtypes oftentimes have the easiest time shifting perspectives of all mm -hmm. subtypes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, the not to jump ahead too much, but the harmonizing INTP usually builds up a framework of what are all the different perspectives and voluntarily or actively shifts between those so that when they hear someone speak, for example, they're wondering, um, what what perspective are they coming from? So it's being led by the situation and the other people rather than their sort of like set in stone pre-existing model. So then my question is, is Linda Behrens a harmonizing INTP because she creates all these profiles of different types and how they experience things and builds a framework off of people's experiences? You know, that's, that's an interesting question. So I, I don't want don't want to speak for Linda. I, I mean, I think if she read the four uh, that, uh, and we haven't had a discussion about this in the past year or two, but um, I go back to the 90s. I think it was 1995, six. Um, when she organized a type conference, actually temperament 
and, and type uh, in Southern California with David Kiersey as one of the speakers, David Kiersey Sr. Um, and uh, author of Please Understand Me and, and so on. And I think David is, so, so both of them have in principle, they ascribe to an organismic model of the personality. In other words, human beings are organisms. Human beings are not mental abstractions. They're not statistical distributions, um, that they are organisms. And so what are the principles that regulate organisms like metabolism and information flow and that kind of thing? Yet when you meet them, um, and, and in the writing as well, you I, I definitely saw two very different styles sitting at lunch with them. And David, to me, really struck me as a dominant INTP. Uh, I don't know if he was that way all of his life or he simply arrived there. And he arrived at a point that he was very confident about his perspective and the way he presented type. Uh, he was never a fan of the functions and never became a fan of the functions even when Linda said, well, you know, the functions are the metabolism of like the metabolic processes of the organism. Not everything is about pattern. Like there's also process. Organisms have a process, but I don't know. David didn't listen. Um, and that's what I mean. Like he was sitting at the table and he's at the conference and they had private discussions, but he never incorporated that thinking into his approach. Um, and that's what I mean. Like not, not a good listener in that respect. Whereas Linda definitely, I mean, one is that, I mean, they're both psychologists. I mean, that's their training. Um, but Linda is much more focused on where is the other person coming from? And in practice, when you're coaching people in organizations, yes, there are principles to apply. But the fact is one of the basic principles is rapport building. And you have to start with where the person is, uh, not where your model is. Um, and, and so I just think even the multiple models perspective where there's multiple ways to reach type, there's the preference code, the eight function model, um, temperament, interaction styles. Now she's been working on intentional styles, uh, which are the same as socionics as the quadra. Um, and, and so there's this, in, in addition to the psychological models that a person would utilize as a therapist or, or a consultant. Um, so I, I would definitely say, yeah, it, it was just really fun listening to the two of them. And, and maybe they both ended up normalizing at the very end. Cause I think, you know, much older brains can, can be all be quite normalizing. The person has a set way of thinking. Um, but yeah, at the time there, it was a very stark difference is a humanistic approach as well as an organismic one on Linda's part. And, and I think that the, the dominant is whatever their model is in its detail, it's like, it's the perspective. I, I don't know how many times I've said to some, especially an INTP psychologist who was just so insistent uh, about five factor model. He didn't understand that type is not about traits. And it didn't matter what I said, like he just didn't hear it because it didn't fit into his pre-existing assumption that a type is a trait cluster statistically. Like that's the definition he's working with and that's it. There is no other possibility. That is the one right way. Um, now I use this in sort of as a negative example, but there are lots of positive examples where the INTP has a really accurate and effective understanding and, and I think that's where the dominant can really benefit the most. We don't talk, we haven't talked about coaching in these, but the, the dominant is terms of like, but what is the actual effectiveness of what is it that you're doing? Um, not just the accuracy of the model, but like out in the world, like getting feedback. Mm. Yeah, that's good words of wisdom. And so for the normalizing subtype, you said that there are quite a few people who turn into normalizing as they age. You mm -hmm. also have said before that a lot of people can grow into harmonizing as they age too. Mm -hmm. So it almost seems like you can become either set in your ways as you get older or more flexible in your thinking and open to different perspectives. The paradox of aging. Oh yeah, I, I feel like as I observe my parents' generation, people in their 70s and now even in their 80s, and remembering my grandparents, I mean, we know like there, there's one archetype of like the crotchety old man who yells at the neighbor's kids. 
and then there's like the the wise, strong, and gentle old man uh, who is like the patriarch of the family and there to to give supportive advice, even though the grandkids live lives that he couldn't have imagined, you know, or even make sense to him. Um, and I don't mean this just for INTP. I mean, for, for everyone. Yeah. Mm, makes sense. Makes sense. And so that brings us to the creative INTP. And so Dario calls us the creative investigator. And this INTP is more exploratory and social than others of this type. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, there, there is this Yang extroverted intuiting marketing element to them. Like they're sort of outgoing and vivacious and talkative and they tell jokes. Um, they're playful, they're funny. And then the, the introverted thinking is a more yin style that has like a tremendous breadth of of uh, flexibility there, like a lot of, lot of different interests. And, and that's one thing that sets them apart, not just the flexibility about one around one topic, but there is this curiosity there and this almost like, oh yeah, in order to understand life, you need to sample and, and be aware of a lot of different things. So the curious investigator has this, this, exploratory quality, this, this, uh, questioning, but not in the sense of like a hostile critical questioning, uh, but really wondering like, Oh, what is this? And how does this work? Uh, and it, they end up being more social and are probably the most not interpersonally or maybe romantically competent, but they present as the most sewage uh, sort of fluid and social of, of all of the INTPs. Uh, and they're the ones that could actually look um, ENTP-like and, and may wonder actually for much of their time, oh, am I really a, an ENTP? And the reason is, is they have this brain-wise, a starburst pattern, and hormonally, there is this, this theme of dopamine. So there is this getting hits off of not, not extreme sports, but getting hits off of uh, really fascinating rabbit holes and really great conversations, you know, philosophical conversations, uh, eclectic knowledge, um, where is the future going and how does that connect to the past and sort of this constant discovery of, you know, I mean, there is a drive to discover principles, but the, in, in accessing those and referring to those, but they're also willing to jump and talk about like, oh yeah, astrology. And I, I think it's important to remember for INTP, in particular, that when they're exploring a topic, and, and even if they use the tool that they're using, so let's say there's an INTP who, you know, like deep down, if you were to press them, like, oh, do you believe in astrology? Well, that's an introverted feeling question and doesn't really make sense to them anyway. Um, it's something to use, and they might say, well, you know, it's, it's fun in the sense that, like, it gives me a new perspective every day. Like then I, I read something that's like, oh, what is my horoscope for today? And, and it's going to suggest something that maybe they hadn't thought about and starting their day. So that doesn't mean that they're going to hew to it or believe in it or something that's just like something to jump off of. Uh, so they have this range of interests and the starburst pattern really allows them to get into this creative flow and, you know, like entertain a lot of different ideas at once as they are attempting to converge on something. And they say attempting because this is the subtype that has difficulty, not with motivation per se or energy, but being scattered. And, you know, like starting a project and not finishing and starting eight other projects and not finishing them, or maybe finishing something, but not really running with it. Um, and so that, that definitely is something. And it makes it harder professionally too for them to settle down because in a way they're like uh, a cultural rebel. So I think what happens is, and it's useful to talk about the third function with all of the types developmentally. Um, if introverted sensing shows up for the dominant, it's like the acceptance of hierarchy and the systems of the way they are and, and working with those and climbing those. With the creative subtype, a lot of it is about disrupting those. Like they're very interested in the huge bodies of knowledge that exist out there. Like, oh yeah, like comic books and anime 
and different music genres and, and like da, 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 like a lot of these things. Like this is a very, this person can talk, this INTP can talk on any topic. Um, but ultimately deep down in, in the sort of introverted sensing, there is a rejection of establishment thinking, especially the there is one way to think. Uh, and a part of that can make it difficult unless their profession, their job role is actually to be like excited and interested in proposing difficult questions um, without having to be responsible for answering them it definitively. Um, so it's, it's a very open style. Uh, I, I do think it's important to remember, yes, they are INTPs. And so they... Ultimately, a lot of what's happening is they're analyzing the data that they're gathering. Like that ultimately is, is what's going on. It's just there's more feedback and there's a lot of breath and openness. I could definitely see that. So then how would you go about differentiating this kind of INTP from an ENTP? So I think a big part of it is the investigative aspect. Um, so ENTPs... Um, will look into things as part of some other often entrepreneurial spirit, a project in an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, whereas this INTP really is an investigator and is going to do, um, you know, they're, they're, I would say all the creative subtypes want to get into some, like sample this and sample that, but sampling to them still means I'm gonna do my best to understand the subject. Uh, that if they're writing a book like on, on a topic, they're going to throw themselves into that. If they're traveling somewhere, they're going to investigate, like, what is this culture and what are the options? Um, and so there is this investigative element that's going on all of the time. Whereas I would say for ENTP, it's, especially if they're creative subtype, there's much more of an entrepreneurial element that goes with it. Like they both do some entrepreneurism and the investigating, but the investigator really is, um, I, I, th I think the solid theme for this subtype. Yeah, well put. And then that takes us to the normalizing subtype. This INTP is an exacting designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the uh, can be the easily the stereotypical uh, works in a cubicle, very quiet um, INTP of few words uh, is present, is observant, um, has very narrow specific interests of which they go very very deep. Um, and they go so deep and so much into that interest that actually it feels like a whole world unto itself for them. So it's not like, oh, I'm just doing this one little thing. From them, this one little thing, actually, it's like a snow globe. And then you realize the globe is uh, the snow globe is a whole living world and very interesting in and of itself. Um, so going back to to some of the definitionally, uh, it is exacting. So it's not necessarily about correcting people. Um, they may not raise their hand at all or raise their voice and sit unless something looks really sort of off. Um, but in their work, there is this element of like, how do we uh, meet the design specifications uh, it, that, that are given to them? So let's say, and oftentimes, something that we know with each of these subtypes is there's an element that relates to career. And so they're often in a support position. They're often in a large organization, not necessarily, um, but they do well on those. And in that position, somebody's going to give them a job to do basically and a project to do. And they're really going to get into that nitty gritty of designing the solution. Uh, yeah, they're going to do some investigating and the other themes are going to come up there. But many times they're in the specialist role and they're asked to do this because they're already the specialist. And so their investigating is simply within that specialty area. And maybe there's like, I don't know, the update to the, the programming system and some new libraries have come out for this programming language uh, and then playing around with these libraries. So it's a very narrow uh, sort of but deep, very deep understanding. And what we see in the brain is oftentimes this much more linear farm field kind of 
connections, wiring. So they are the ones that go from A to B and B to C and C to D and are thorough about it. And in the sense that they're using extroverted intuiting, it's really about, and th this I think is a great example, and I've seen this with one INTP, that he relies a lot on mind maps. And, and he's done the brain imaging and he's exacting designer. Um, but yeah, I mean, he comes off as like, actually he's a little bit more like relaxed and extroverted, although he's not American. Um, for for the normalizing, nonetheless, in order to represent the extroverted intuiting, do the designing and so on, he needs paper. He needs a pencil or pen and like going through this process and like working it out and what are all the ins and outs and what are all the angles and being thorough with it um, and not jumping to any conclusions, like maybe entertain an idea, um, but not jumping to it. I think this is a type... Speaking of the third function, that it's very easy to mistake at the beginning for thinking, oh, they're ISTJ, for example. Um, no, they are using extroverted intuiting. It's just that this is the, the sort of yin, softer, more observer-based extroverted intuiting. Um, they often have a sense of humor, and that humor passes over people's heads. Um, and that's like that the sort of almost, you know, are people paying attention? Are they intelligent? Who am I actually talking to? Um, but it, you know, they're there's they're not so social, but the extroverted intuiting is still there. It's just not about talking. It's really about observing and then making connections based on what is the the perceptions, like what is observed. Um and then the the introverted thinking is like the dominant, this more yang version. So it is very much like within the specialty, they're very, very aware of all the conventional ways of doing things. The history of doing things uh, with programming languages, it's like you want to do commenting correctly. And this is how you build a system from the ground up so that it's sustainable use over time. Um, all of these, uh, you know, at least within this area, very exacting. Now, if they step out of this area, then they might be like, well, I don't know anything about this. And the, the introverted sensing is a little bit like, yeah, I'm going to stay away and from this and will not embrace it until I get into it. But then they're, when are they going to get into it? Is it relevant to their job? Um, only if they're really pushed. Um, I do think with hobbies, they are the ones that will pursue hobbies uh, in, in detail, like they will also specialize in a hobby and see this as like, okay, like I'm very sedentary at my job and it does one thing, but there's also a sport that they like. And so they do that sport also. And they actually can become quite good at it um, and know like all of the ins and outs of it. And they're certainly more patient uh, than the creative or dominant subtype. It's just the social skills are... Very narrow. They will they will be the INTP that is proud that they do not watch television. Um, and, and then in social situations, they wonder why they have nothing to talk about. Uh, some of them, however, are more balanced and they're more conventional and they do do all of the things that other people uh, do sort of conventionally, at least a little bit. So they can actually get along quite smoothly. Uh, I, I think that there's like a maturity issue and sort of like how they were raised. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, there are those edge cases where it's like, is this person ISTJ or INTP? And this helps put it together and explain why. Is this INTP also more likely to see themselves as dutiful in comparison to other INTPs? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a great word to use. Um, there, there to, to connect with Helen Fisher's work, there is this element of serotonin. And serotonin is, I, I think one INTP said it's, it's not that, he cares deeply or something about his coworkers, but he wants the organization to succeed. He wants the project to succeed and he wants the team to succeed. And so there is this sort of aspirational extroverted feeling um, and introverted sensing that is about the group and the success of the group uh, in their problem solving endeavors. Um, and so they're going to step up to meet those needs in the most sort of like thoughtful and professional way possible, like meeting professional standards. And, and in family life and in roles, 
that they take, like, okay, what are the standards for those roles and being aware of those? Mm, makes sense. And so to conclude the subtypes, there is the harmonizing INTP called the caring theorizer. And this INTP is more empathic and reflective than others of this type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, again, we, we can go to the underlying functions and it's um, sort of the, this holistic or receptive or yin version of both of the preferred functions, introverted thinking and extroverted intuiting. Um, so the, they're observant, they're, they're also listening. They, they learn listening skills. This is part of what they need to do. I would say that just as the dominant is focusing on models of organizations and power and so on. And the creative is very much like, oh, what are all of the different models? Can't be expert in most of them, not, not even a tiny percentage, but let me at least sample them. Um, the normalizing really deeply specializes in something, which is usually in a support role uh, and interest. So this one, basically the, the harmonizing INTP has chosen human beings is their object of study and trying to understand and human beings, I mean, in, on the individual, like interpersonal level and in all that messiness and organicness and so on. So the joke about the, the, you know, the, the company hires a mathematician to come in and understand uh, and sort of like uh, the optimize, this is sort of a joke uh, about engineers, not INTPs, but I think it's close enough or mathematicians you know, optimize what's going on. And, and so the, the, the mathematician says, well, let's start by assuming that every person is a perfect sphere. I, you know, I mean, no, I mean, people are not spheres and they're not perfect. Um, so there it very much is more of an organic thinking um, to this. And what we see in terms of the brain wiring is usually several different, these diamond shaped patterns, so several different modes that the person can be in. So they can sit down with somebody and be in this expert facilitating mode. And then in a different situation, they, let's say it's instead of an individual, it's with a team, then they're in like a team diplomacy mode. And they have these different modes that are both the back and the front of the brain, the left and the right, so that they're incorporating a lot of different ways of thinking and they're very comfortable with things being murky and subtle and gray and fuzzy. Um, I got to believe it, it was an INTP in some sort of holistic approach who, who stumbled upon uh, fuzzy, fuzzy mathematics, fuzzy set theory, fuzzy thinking um, that, that let's not, like we can focus on methodology, but let's not get caught up in all of the technicalities. And while it's useful to have good definitions for words, let's not get bogged down in those. And if we encounter somebody who's saying things that seem like wild or different to us, then like, let's put aside the models that we have and actually start listening for real. And let's begin the investigative process like an anthropologist in a way. Um, of who is this person or what is this organization and, and what's going on. So there, there's a lot more willingness to go back to like, not even like, yeah, first principles, basic principles and methodology rather than, it's like, you know, it's, it's one thing to, to classify apples based on their uses, like good for cooking or good for eating or good for turning into, you know, uh, I don't know, apple fries. Um, it's another to understand the principles of like how you run an orchard effectively. And so they're very interested in, you know, the weather changes, there's animals, there's the needs of the marketplace, there's all these different things. And, and, and I think that, that when we talk about individual people and interpersonal, then there's very much this personal scale. And you can't just be like, oh, my client has come in and they said something I don't agree with, so I'm going to correct them. I mean, maybe the INTP, the harmonizing has in the back of their mind, their general role is to help the person think better and function better. Um, and certainly thinking better is there, but you don't sort of like obnoxiously just correct the person. 
Like that just doesn't work. The, the dominant INTP style of doing things like is not very successful as a diplom as a diplomat or therapist or something like that. So this harmonizing INTP takes very seriously um, that we really do have to to suspend uh, our judgment in many situations. And then they develop a methodology and a way of thinking that's sort of at a meta level. And, and that's why going back to what you said earlier is this, I mean, for all of the types of the diamond pattern, the harmonizing tends to be something that appears like at or just after midlife. Not that it has to be there, but that's sort of statistically. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so I have harmonizing as my secondary subtype mm. and I'm relatively, younger. And so I wonder if you can feel like a bit of a misfit if you're a young harmonizing type, because you realize that you have a brain of someone who might be a little bit, this is generalizing, right? Totally. I'm totally. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I think that the, the really, I mean, this connects in my mind to a lot of different things. So for example, um, to go on what seems like a completely different topics, there's such a thing as doing psychedelics too much and too early. Um, that the person ends up in the sort of meta space of like harmonizing thinking that doesn't function effectively in the real world. And Jung said the, for the task in the first half of adult life, or we'll say like if we divide life into quarters or childhood is the first quarter and young adult is the second quarter, is to find our place and succeed in the world. And unless our job role is very explicitly fitting with harmonizing, What's going to happen is, especially for types like uh, INTP, um, which are not very common in the population to begin with, um, and they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll just work in a cubicle for 10 years doing like, uh, you know, computer programming and, and systems design and development and get paid a lot of money for that, um, that they're going to end up either wondering, oh, my God, what am I good for? Like, I, I just like, I don't seem to fit anywhere. And, and it's fine when the person is already established, when, when the INTP harmonizer walks into the room and they're 60 years old and they're already established and respected. And it's understood that they're not doing nitty gritty work, that they're there to provide wisdom and to ask like really good questions. Um, and, and so it can be tough. And if they don't go into a profession, if they go into a profession that isn't explicitly harmonizing, then it's going to be really difficult, yes, to know like, oh, gee, where do I fit? That's so true, Dario. You even mentioned at the beginning that David Kiersey and Linda Behrens are both psychologists, but they probably have different subtypes, at least at the beginning of their lives. And so that kind of is adjacent to my situation where I was a I'm actually a business student. So I was chosen as the top 1% of business leaders within my, my realm, which was human resources. And so everyone took the disc and most people were dominant or normalizing or mm -hmm. a combination of those both. And I was very different in the crowd. And so it was very noticeable. And so you can still be a weird subtype within your profession. You'll just really notice it in some way. And, mm -hmm. you know, there'll just be some sort of, man, one of these is not like the others syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, so, so you mentioned disc and Victor Galenko, the, the socionics expert for, for who has, uh, you know, afforded these names, um, that, um, the, the harmonizing subtype can at times be a little bit lazy. I see that in the descriptions that in his version of them. And, and I can see that when, it's not that they're lazy. It's sort of like saying with NF types, like, oh, they 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 don't really like they, they're not that that on the ball worker who's there like twenty four seven in a way like you know the the pulling the rope for the organization. Of course not, because that INFJ or INFP is not an ESTJ or Absolutely. ISTJ, and actually they're doing a lot of soft work, which is. Uh, you know, oiling the wheels of the organization and the interpersonal relationships and making sure people are happy. And because it's not part of their official job description or what they get paid for, um, it shows up as like, oh, well, what exactly are they doing um, from the STJ's point of view? And so I, I think that's how it just can appear in general here that at times because of the, the harmonizing 
capacity to be present and um, receptive and vulnerable and working off of what other people are giving them, um, that it can take a long time for them to have a response. Or many times I think what happens is they are responding and people don't really notice it. They take it for granted. Um, and if they were in a different position that which like explicitly asked for those things, then that would be different. You know, then, then it would be like, oh yes, you know, they're, they're very good at what they do. Um, and, and I do think by the way, the caring theorizer and just going with the names is yeah, they're, they're theorizing and they're playing with a lot of ideas. Um, there is this sort of yin version of, of introverted thinking. It's not one angle or model. It's like many models. And there's also caring that comes with it. And, and that links back to Helen Fisher's uh, work, you know, sort of saying about estrogen and oxytocin. And this is the INTP that's the most comfortable with hugging. Not just the social, oh, excited, like, yeah. It, it's the, the, this INTP can cry in front of other people. You know, this INTP can, can hug um, and not feel awkward about it. Um, and so, you know, is, is that a skill that gets paid? Not really, um, but it's valuable nonetheless. Mm, I'm going to do the hug test now. I'm like, <laughs> is this INTP harmonizing? Let's try it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And so, Dario, I'm curious, what are some general INTP traits, regardless of what their subtype is, do you notice? Mm. Or, or behaviors or mentalities. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I mean, I, I feel like a, a great way to, to describe every type is one way, one approach is to explore like what are the core themes, like reading a novel and asking what were the themes that were in the novel. And it isn't like a, a fancy, you know, definitional approach. It's just what are the themes that are there? Um, and and I, I think some of them are, obviously come from the functions, like there's a desire and a, uh, a aim to deepen their expertise and they enjoy exploring ideas as part of deepening their expertise. That could be very wide exploration of ideas with some expertise in many areas or super detailed expertise and exploring of like really minutia of ideas um, if, they're, if it's more narrow in their approach. Um, I feel like they're not really, so I would say for ENTP, by way of example, ENTPs can often be, especially when younger, and especially the male ENTPs, somewhat culturally and socially oblivious. Um, they just sort of step over what an ESFJ would be like, oh my God, how could you like do that? How could you say that? Um, that's just so inappropriate in this situation. Um, I mean, I've seen, especially male ENTPs, I'm talking about young ones, like insult somebody in the first like 10 seconds of meeting them. And not knowing it, not realizing it. With INTP, I think it's about um, established, I, I want to say like every area of specialty of inquiry, every field or discipline has its culture and its way of doing things. And INTPs can learn about those, but ultimately they don't care about them. You know, those artificial walls are obstacles like who says that like physics and chemistry should be in separate buildings? And, and I'm not saying they always take a multidisciplinary approach, but they're willing to both learn what those boundaries are and then also just cross them because they see them as completely artificial if that's where their reasoning takes them. Um, now, if they're a more analytic approach and they really have this like very strong mental model, Everything that doesn't fit the mental model is just the, those are the boundaries. The boundaries are actually self-imposed. And I would say the main limitation for INTPs is self-limiting. Like they limit themselves by, by establishing that this needs to be that with this way. And this is defined like this. And, you know, like Jung defined the, the, the functions as like a mandala, as something that you meditate on not as a set of eight cognitive function definitions. And, and so I think that, there, that when we talk about crossing boundaries, it really is for the INTP, are they willing to step up to have like the more mature definition that is about engagement and as a process, or are they looking for the sort of pedantic, 
like x equals y plus two kind of thing. Um, I think that there's a lot of detaching that happens in situations, detaching from the situation, from the people, from their own feelings um, to try and understand what's going on. And, and I think when they can do that really well in, in an ethical way, so it's, of course, always about bringing in, I think, for all of the types, the inferior function. Um, I've seen an INTP who did a lot of uh, a lot of strategizing, assisting is, is a support person, a, a lawyer, Harvard lawyer, supporting people in power. Um, I mean, I met him personally several times. Um, profoundly unethical, effective, but profoundly unethical. And so that's something that it's a theme of on the one hand, um, strategizing and how to make the most of the situation, find like the optimal path forward. Um, and then at the same time, also needing to balance that with like, what are the ethics of, of the situation of the human beings that are involved? Um, uh, I would say something else that is sort of cool to know um, is that making discoveries brings them a lot of joy. So we might think sometimes, well, oh, this INTP, unless they're the creative subtype, doesn't come off as very emotional, very expressive. And we might wonder with like normalizing INTP, like, oh, do they experience joy at all? And the dominant INTP, like, why are they stepping on other people's joy? But no, but they do, they do get joy from discovery. And, um, and that, that really is, and what would the human race be without discovery? I, I mean, like, honestly, we wouldn't be talking in the Zoom and people wouldn't be watching it um, without asking questions that are like way outside the box, very basic questions. Um, and then putting that all together in a way that is coherent, that makes sense. Like, yeah, electromagnetism is more than flying a kite. Uh, you know, God bless Benjamin Franklin, probably ENTP. Uh, and for doing the experimenting, but I think it took INTPs to actually work out and make like a whole system that is coherent around electromagnetism and energy and the, the basic principles that are there. And then like really hewing to those as they develop more like ancillary technologies or, or ideas. Um, and then the last thing is boy, and this is a big differentiator with INTJ is the struggling with the external world and the demands of the external world the physical environment, uh, their own bodies, like all of that sensing kind of stuff. And that's why I think they really benefit from having a support system, like working at a university or in an organization that provides lunch and a gym and these kinds of things that make life easier for them so that they can actually do the genius work that they're, not to put pressure on them, but they're sort of born to do. And, and that genius takes time. Um, and, and, you know, it, it takes sort of the right environment to nurture that. So I, I would say for all of the subtypes, like the, those are some of the themes. And I know when talking about INTP, maybe I'm being a little bit critical in some of the examples. Um, and, and yet at the same time, I would have to say I have a lot of respect for the type, like the capacity to just hold this level of specialization and understanding and then to deploy that in even completely novel situations is really quite, um, is quite impressive. Yeah, well said. INTPs are good at detaching and then creating a mental model that is able to encompass a very elegant explanation of something and make it as airtight within their own reasoning as possible. Mm -hmm. And so you can see this in people even in the typology field. Linda Behrens and David Kiersey created their own type models and made it as airtight within their own logic as possible. And then they shared it with the world. A lot of NTPs actually pioneer a lot of type. Like the creator of Socionics is an ENTP. Yeah, and, and Victor Galenko has INTP preferences. And, and uh, for me, like he's the go-to person in Socionics. Yeah, so Victor Galenko, another INTP who creates their own model of reality. And yeah, it's, it's very great. It's very awesome. And so thank you, Dario, for sharing your expertise around this subject. And so I hope everyone learned something new today. 
and that they enjoyed watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.